If you've ever watched any of Michael Rood's original shows that he did from Israel, in those shows he always made sure that we knew that the borders of Israel were from the Euphrates to the Nile. Well, that's not what we see today. So is that God's original intention? I mean, is that what Israel is supposed to look like today? What if we could go to Israel and just never mind the borders? What if we could just go there and see Israel as it is in the Bible without worrying about these artificial lines between political parties? Well, we're gonna explore that today with our friend Keith Johnson. Keith, welcome to Shabbat Night Live. Scott, you're so good at this, man. I'm telling you, you, you captured it. You captured it in the opening. It's so interesting. I was, uh, I was uh, watching an SNL. This, action, this whole SNL series is inspired by SNL. Ah, and we okay. had a dear friend here, Aaron Lipkin, who did a series called The Exodus You Never Knew. Mm. And episode one was on Joshua's altar, and you invited me to be here for the open. We were introducing Jonah, mm -hmm. and I was all excited, and I didn't know what the series was gonna be about. And, uh, and also I'm hearing about Joshua's altar, and, and, and I'm watching it, and I got excited. I actually went and got the love gift. I bought it. Huh? <laughs> because the love gift was Understanding Israel with Aaron Lipkin and Scott Laird, very, very informative. So when you invited me to do the opens uh, for that series, I watched the episode and I, it was right before we were doing our fall prayer pilgrimage to Israel. We do two tours, fall prayer pilgrimage to Israel, and then the other one is the one, it was an inaugural tour called The Bible Beyond Borders. And so um, as we were doing that, I mean, and on that tour, we pray, we go north, south, east and west. We pray as at the top of Mount Hermon, called the Eyes of Israel. We go all the way down to the lowest point in earth, mm. which is the Dead it's Sea. sea. Mm -hmm. We go to the Mediterranean Sea. We come in at the time of, uh, in, uh, in uh, Tel Aviv, and we're at ancient Joppa, and we go as far west as the Jordan River. But some things happened there that were absolutely amazing. Uh, and then I was invited to Sinai, talked about it a hundred times. But one of the things that happened there that was so amazing is that as I went up to the top of the mountain, I remember sharing this at Passover. Passover of 2023 was an epic event because my friend Michael was here for the entire thing. It was, it was absolutely amazing. But I was sharing that as I went up the mountain, I had an internal, you know, external challenges, the physical issues. As I told you, mm. you helped my life be changed. I was able to make it to the top. But on the way down, something happened that was so significant. I just have to share this again. As I'm way, going down uh, Mount Sinai, I first run into my friend, uh, Dr. Gary, who happens to be a Jewish man whose father uh, was actually a survivor of the Holocaust. And as he was uh, in Germany during that time, his father was a young man who was serving uh, the Germans in really difficult situations. Anyway, uh, Dr. Gary happened to bring his father's prayer shawl to Sinai. Mm. And as I'm on my way down the mountain, uh, he's there with his prayer shawl. And so we stopped, we took a picture, and I later told me this story. It was a phenomenal story. If you haven't seen Passover 2023, get the DVD. <laughs> the whole story is there. But then as I got to the bottom, something happened. Um, I saw two rangers in Saudi Arabia. They're carrying their guns. And as they're walking, I see my two friends um, that are at the bottom of the mountain. And uh, as, I'm, as I'm seeing them, I want the rangers to know that I see them. So you got two guys carrying guns and two people that are on our tour. And I just came from, you know, taking a picture with a guy who's got a prayer shawl in Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia. It's a little tense. Yeah. <laughs> so I yell out to my two friends and I happen to yell out to, to my, my one friend who actually speaks Arabic and Hebrew. I spoke to her in Hebrew knowing that maybe they wouldn't know what I'm saying. I'm like, hey, tell them to stop. So... So the two rangers are coming to see the two people and they're there and she tells them in Arabic to stop. They stop. I get to the bottom of the mountain and I say, hey, uh, would you do me a favor? Her name was Rebecca. Would you tell uh, them that I wanna take a picture with them? And she says, no, you don't. I said, yes, I do. She said, no, you don't. I said, no, I really wanna take, in fact, here's a picture of them. I, I got a picture that I wanna show you, uh, Scott. This is the two guys that, um, that I saw at the bottom. Now this is an interesting picture because they were first walking with rifles and walkie talkies. And what this picture represents for me was something that happened on the way down Mount Sinai. It was as if, Scott, fear wasn't an issue for me. It, it's mm. like I had a moment with reverential fear with the God of creation. By the time I get to the bottom with these two guys, I'm not afraid of the fact that they got guns. In fact, I said to them, told, tell, tell them to put their guns down. She said, 
No, you don't want to say that. Yeah, tell them to put their guns down. She tells them in Arabic to put their guns out, and they say it's forbidden. We can't do it. I said, why can't you do it? We can't have guns and pictures. Well, then take the guns off so that I can take the picture. And they fight back and forth, and eventually they agree. <laughs> so it's, it's so interesting. So for me, Scott, when I um, was in Saudi Arabia and had that moment, it inspired me to do something. And, and it really had to do with Israel. Mm. When I landed in the United States, I made two phone calls. I called the uh, CEO of our tour company, Noam, and then I called Aaron Lipkin. And the reason that I called Aaron Lipkin is because of Shabbat Night Live. Hmm. I called Aaron and I said, Aaron, I'm on my way. I just got back from Israel. I want to talk about doing something that Michael has inspired me to do for years. Michael. <laughs> Michael would always talk about when he'd do a tour, he'd say, you know, sometimes we had to have an armored bus. And why would he say that? Because there's places that you go that are really, really important, that are also really, really, I'm not gonna use the word dangerous, I'm gonna say uh, tense. So I called Aaron and I said, Aaron, I wanna do a tour this spring in just a few months, it's called The Bible Beyond Borders, and I need you to help us. And so Aaron said, uh, okay, and by the way, this isn't normal. And two tour companies don't work together. Mm. Aaron has his own tour company. He worked, with, um, he worked with them. So we began to prepare this inaugural tour. And the reason that I did it, Scott, was because I was inspired about so many different people uh, that have never gotten a chance to go to Israel. In fact, it was Passover at the Seder on this stage that as I was sitting behind Michael, I looked at him and it was as if his, it was like a light came on and said, you know, this man has inspired so many people through his experience in Israel. He brought us to Israel. He brought good footage from Israel. He lived in Israel. That's where I first met Michael was in Israel. My life was changed in Israel with Michael. And I just felt like, you know what? We're gonna unload everything we can to bring some really good quality footage to a Root Awakening, the BFA, and to everywhere that we can of Israel. And so we did something that, um, <laughs> Some people would say, ah, you know, Keith, you went a little bit radical, but we actually have shared some of it. And in the month of June, folks can actually look on the uh, SNL a series in June where the kids were being taught. What was that series called? Oh, yes, uh, the How to Teach the Torah. Yeah, so uh, we did opens, and in the opens, we introduced the fact that we did some socials that Jacob took care of, and Stephanie did some, some, some uh, teachings that are on the free app all through June. And so it was really amazing. Well, that, we got such good response. Like we decided, you know what? Let's move beyond the appetizers. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Uh, what we did was like social platform, Masada, mm -hmm. Sea of Galilee, the Helena Stones in the Old City, the City of David, the Temple Mount. For the teachings, Qumran, Bethlehem, the Garden Tomb, and Jacob's Well. So we did, it was so much fun. And, and, and we got such good response, we decided to go a little bit further. So we're calling this series Bringing the Bible beyond the borders. There is nothing, Scott, like using all five senses to hear, to see, to smell, to touch, and sometimes even to taste at the very spot where the Bible actually took place. I mean, what do you think mm. of that? I mean, is that, is that not pretty uh, inspiring? I mean, isn't that cool? That, that is cool, yeah, because, especially since, you know, a lot of folks just, they, whether the financial situation or whatever, or they can't travel. Mm -hmm. Some people are just not going to be able to go. Like I know that you went around the office here. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned this back in June, I think, that you had asked Michael to go, but he mm -hmm. said, well, now that he's in a situation where he needs a walker right yeah. now, yeah. he'd love to, but he, but he can't. And, and other people can't go because of you know, financial yeah. things or Physical, whatever. family, mm -hmm. finances. And to be honest, I mean, I wanna, I'm going to be sensitive. I mean, there's, there's a lot of fear. Uh, the media does a really, really, really powerful job of making sure every time you see Israel, they're fighting with the Palestinians. Every time you look at, hear about Israel, you talk about, so I mean, there's, there's that that goes on, but um, there's a lot of reasons that people are not able to go. So what we're gonna try to do in the spirit of my dear friend from Passover at the Seder is to bring Israel here. Love it. There's people that support this ministry that would love to go to Israel. They'd absolutely love it, but they just can't. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna bring the ministry uh, to them. So we have the Bible Beyond Borders tour, which we, which we do in 2024, we're gonna do it again. We can talk about that later, but that's not the purpose of this. This is like the Bible, bringing the Bible Beyond Borders series. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do five episodes. Now, Scott, I gotta tell you something. In, in the second half, I, I just got this in my hands and just shared it with you guys. I just got in my hands, I'm gonna call it an epic piece 
on what we did uh, in the spirit of Michael. We literally, mm-hmm. like I said, we called uh, Aaron, but, but before I get that, before I get to that, <laughs> there, there's some basic things that you do in Israel, right? We land in uh, uh, Tel Aviv. We get to see the beautiful sunsets in the Mediterranean. But then when we start our tour, there's always a couple places that I always make sure that I go when we go to the north to the Galilee. One of them is Mount Carmel, one of my favorite stories. Can, I, I'm gonna read just a little bit if I can. Yeah, please this do. Is, this is in 1 Kings chapter 18, uh, verse, uh, 20, verse 20. It says that, so Ahab sent a message among all the sons of Israel and brought the prophets together at Mount Carmel. And I love that when we're there, I get to stop with this group of people, open my Bible and start reading this story at the very spot that it took place. It is so inspiring to me. Like I'm everyone else like, why is he so excited? It's the first day. How's he ever gonna get through the tour? (laughs) Because I'm at the place where Elijah battled the prophets of Baal. I mean, think about that. I mean, this is where it ha- there's no. This is not on the archaeological debate. Mount Carmel is talked about beyond this story. Solomon mm. talks about Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel is all through Scripture, and it's it's a beautiful place, it's a fertile place, and it's a place where there was a battle. Now, after that, we then move on down into the Galilee, where you see uh, uh, Mount Arbel and the horns of Hittin. Nehemiah and I did a an entire book about the prayer that Yeshua taught at the Horns of Hattin. In fact, on Mount, Ar- Mount Arbel, I don't know if you knew this or not, there's, well, you haven't been there, have you? No, I've never been oh, to Israel. this is perfect. Have you ever been to Israel? No. Okay, so you get to be representative of all the people that are watching. Okay. You ask the questions, you have the concerns, you have the comments, this is great. You've never been to Israel, but you're like a walking encyclopedia, man. Like you, <laughs> like it learned, because you've talked to all these people or what's the deal? I, I've learned from Michael, that's what it is. Okay. You know, because he, he was the original guy that, I mean, that's the whole reason you were inspired to do this, right? Because he did that with his original yeah. series. He, he took people to Israel, yeah. even if they'd never been there before, and gave them the true story of yeah. what happened in the Red Sea. He goes swimming in the Red Sea, for, or, or, you know, for goodness I mean, sake. Goodness gracious, yeah. yeah. But, uh, so, so you haven't been there. No. But let me ask you a question. So we, so we go to the Galilee, and we get on the we get on the boat. And we go out on the sea. What is your favorite story about the Sea of Galilee? Uh, it has to be when Yeshua walked on the water. You got that in the Bible somewhere? Yes. Yes. Read it for in us. Uh, it's in Matthew, mm-hmm. Matthew fourteen, starting at verse twenty two. You want me to read the whole? Sure, read so read four, the part that excites you. Sure. Fourteen twenty two to thirty three. So. I'll start with uh, in 25, in the fourth watch of the night. Now, I had to look at what is the fourth watch? So this is like three to 6 a.m. <laughs> okay. this, you know, this, this is like, <laughs> the disciples are night owls here. Right, you know? right. so, anyway, uh, he went toward them, Yeshua, walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But at once Yeshua called out to them saying, courage, it is I, do not be afraid. It was Peter who answered. Lord, he said, if it is you, tell me to come across the water. Come, Yeshua said. Then Peter got out of the boat and started walking toward Yeshua on the water. But as soon as he felt the force of the wind, he took fright and began to sink. Lord, save me, he cried. (laughs) Yeshua put out his hand at once and held him. Man of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Mm. And then, of course, the story goes on. No, 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 Scott, I mean, we go out on the Sea of Galilee. And there's some times where it's windy. I'll tell you my favorite story from the Sea of Galilee is when there's a storm. Mm. And Yeshua says three words, peace, be still. Ah. And there's these times where we've been on the Sea of Galilee where it's raining and the wind will come and it's like, boom. Mm. And then there's times where it's just completely calm. Mm. And I, sometimes I want to be like Peter. I'll be honest with you. I get so excited out there. I want to jump out of the water. <laughs> yep, I can't do that. <laughs> but the other thing we do is we sing, we dance, we worship. We pray, uh, we, we love on each other. It, it, and, and to be at that place and to know that that's the spot. That's the place. There's no other Sea of Galilee. There's not like, right. there's two different seas of Galilee that he could have, no, there's one. And we're actually there. I mean, that's, that's amazing. So what I did was um, we called it an inaugural tour. And the reason that I called it inaugural um, is because I needed to get a group of people that would be um, courageous, uh, that would be brave, that would be willing, able, um, ready to go wherever I felt like we needed to go. And I mean, we set an itinerary and, and did all that sort of thing. But um, I have to tell you, um, other than the places like, uh, you know, 
ancient Joppa and the Sea of Galilee and, and, and Mount Carmel and Arbel and the Horns of Hattin, um, there are um, some things that we have to do in Israel to actually complete a tour like this. But one of the things that I've done for the last 20 years is I've always wanted to engage with, in fact, let's do something. I have a clip. Uh, can okay. you guys put up clip number one for us? And let's take a look at this clip. Whenever I've been in Israel, I've always wanted to engage with the military. I love these guys. It, they, they are all, they have to, they actually have to serve in Israel, except for if you're in one specific group, which is another point. But I love to be able to give them a handshake, give them a hug, tell them it is what it is that we're going to be doing, you know, and, and they're always so willing. Now, I mean, you know, some people get a little nervous when you got those guns and you got yeah. but you know, what they're there to do is they're there to make sure that where I'm going, that I can be safe. And I love to bring my Bible. I'm talking to the military about my Bible. I'm asking them about the places that I want to go. They're consulting with me about, yeah, here's where you need to be able to go. This is why we, we need to be careful. Mm. And that, it's just kind of a, I don't know how to say it, um, Scott. It's a, it's a humbling experience. Um, it's an exhilarating experience. Uh, and, and then to have men women, young and old, being protected by these young men and women in the IDF to make sure that this group of mine that I'm bringing can experience this without being concerned about. And, and truthfully, one of the reasons we're concerned is because where we're about to go is beyond the borders. And you talked about it in your open. There are political borders that have been set, but I don't find those political borders in the Bible. Right. There is no West Bank in, yeah, exactly. in Isaiah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. And so um, what, we, what, what, I, what I like to say, and I learned this from Aaron. Thank you, Aaron Lipkin, who's probably watching this. You know, when we went uh, with Aaron, he, he said, you know, Keith, a lot of people call it the West Bank, but we call it what it would have been originally uh, considered, Judea and Samaria. Mm, yep. And if you think about it, like think about, about this for a second. So Judea and Samaria, really, really, really important places where there are so many biblical sites in Judea and Samaria, and yet most tour companies, most people who are on tour don't go to those places. Why? Because you have to cross a border. Mm. And so we, uh, we did something that's kind of exciting. Um, in fact, I wanna, if I can, well, let me do this. I, I brought a map. Okay. The first place that we go, and I'm gonna take you, have you take a look at that, if you can take a look at that. Um, what we have is the first map where we have Mount Eval, and we also have a, a place that's called uh, Hebron. <laughs> mm. And with Mount Eval and Hebron, uh, what I decided to do was I asked a, a, some young uh, folks to, to, to come along with me on this tour. And I did something, <laughs> Scott, that I just, I've never done before. I gave up production, I gave up oversight, and I said to these young people who had never been to Israel, it is your job to capture one thing on this tour, just one, I said, and it's going to be our time with uh, Aaron Lipkin at Mount uh, at, at, at Joshua's altar. Well, they went above and beyond the call of duty and decided to add a second place, and I want to talk about that before we show what they did. The second place they decided to add was Hebron. Mm. Do you know about Hebron? I, I've, no, I've he, heard of Hebron, but yeah, it's the only uh, what they would call settlement of Jewish people where there's 800 Jews. Uh, living smack dab in the middle of 250,000 Arabs. Mm. Most settlements are not within the actual city. They're in hills and areas and places like that. But, but this particular place is just, it is filled with tension. There's, a, there's lots and lots that are going on. Most tour companies do not go to Hebron, but I have to go to that place. Why do I want to go to that place? What do we know about Hebron? We know that Hebron is a place where Abraham actually bought a piece of land. Do you know that story? Mm -hmm. He bought a piece of, what do you know about that story? Just generally. Uh, he the bought the, a piece the of details land. are escaping me at this very moment. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he bought, bought a piece of land, right. why? Because his wife, you know, he bought, a, he bought a, a cave and in that cave he buried his wife, Sarah. So all of the patriarchs, the matriarchs are all buried at Hebron. That, that, that's a fact. But in 1929, something happened that is really, really, um, I would say, history uh, shattering. There was what was called the, the Hebron Massacre. 
And in 1929, as a result of the agenda to cause even more tension between the Arabs who lived in the land and the Jews that lived in the land, there was an uprising. And that uprising was as a result of the Temple Mount, believe it or not. Now, in this mm. series, by the way, I don't know if I told you this, at the end of the series, if this isn't too controversial, at the end of the series, we're actually gonna bring people on the Temple Mount with our group. And our group was led by our dear friend who's been here at, at uh, A Rude Awakening, uh, Yehuda Glick. And what he did is he actually came and led our group on a tour and we were able to capture it. Mm. So we're gonna wow. bring people. But okay. as a result of that place, uh, controversy is, had been started and there was a lot of controversy around Hebron, uh, around that place. And what they did is they actually had an uprising. This is really, really sad. And one of the places that the uprising really took place where blood was in the streets was the community of Jews who lived in Hebron was attacked by their neighbors. And Now hold that thought. What, Oh, can we come, can we come back and, and finish that thought and then get into uh, uh, the video? Okay, absolutely. Okay, okay. Let's all right. So hang on. So they were attacked, and let's just hold on to that. Okay. So we'll come back and ask you to finish that story in just a second. So you come back with us too. Thank you for bringing Keith here. It's your donations that make it happen, and we thank you for bringing this to future of people. How can you do that by your donations that continue? So we'll give you a couple minutes to do that. We'll be right back. Your support makes this happen. Thank you. So Keith, before the break, we were talking about this attack at Hebron, 1929. Terrible, terrible massacre. Many, many, many people were killed. Men, women, and children. Synagogues destroyed, and the Jewish community was literally um, forced out of this place. You know, where Abraham had this piece of land, where Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, all, it's just, it, it was a terrible, terrible situation. 1968, after the 67 war, there was a reestablishment of a Jewish settlement. Uh, and then in 1994, there was an, another attack, but this time it was from a man who lived in the Jewish community. And in fact, you know, the thing I got to tell you is that, uh, and by the way, the particular place there is also an enclave for Hamas. So um, you've got people, it, I mean, it, it really, really is tense. And, and we always have to check before we go. I go every time that we can, but there's something about this place that caught the attention of these young people that I brought in to help us produce this. And they just handed me their 13 minute piece. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to come in here with you and uh, in the spirit of my friend, Michael, and to show uh, this piece. You guys are the first ones really that are seeing it other than me. I mean, they look, they even made a rule. <laughs> Keith, you get to look at it twice to make changes other than nothing. <laughs> so they, they went from Joshua's altar, which was the original goal, and they added a little bit of Hebron. If you know anything about uh, Hebron, there are, I tell you what, I don't need to talk about this. They did a great job. Let's take a watch okay. of what they did, okay? Let's do it. You guys are doing something that 99.9999999% Christians that come to Israel to visit don't come to. In order to conduct a tour like this, we had to communicate with a number of people and coordinate with various places. As a result of the ongoing attempted peace process between Israel and the Palestinian Authority, three administrative areas have been created inside Biblical Judea and Samaria, which is also called the West Bank. Area A is exclusively under the control of the Palestinian Authority. In Area B, the Palestinian Authority is over civilian control with Israeli military over security. In Area C, the Israeli government is over civilian control and security. We made sure to take our group into all three areas on our Bible Beyond Borders tour. So the tension is that you have two groups of people, both with a stake in the land, and you've got Israel, who is a legitimate since 1948. We are a country, we've, we've acknowledged that. We took what was given through the United Nations. Uh, the Arab population decided not to take their, their portion of it, so you have this clash that's going on all the time. Yet, for us, we want to go to the places where the Bible took place. And sometimes, that means we've got to cross a border. And when we cross a border, sometimes we even need a military escort. Terrorism is a way to try to get people to be afraid, then they win. And I think for us, what we, what we say is we don't want to be afraid, but we want to be a people of faith to get to the places where this most important book was actually written.
Well, if there's anything such as going to a place that is the Bible beyond borders, it is here at Hebron. In Hebron, you have this amazing building that was built 2,000 years ago by Herod the Great, they call him. He was a great architect. And as you can tell, this is a massive building. Inside this building, on one side, you have a Jewish synagogue. On the other side, you have a Muslim mosque. I've been for the last few months trying to learn a little bit of Arabic just to make a connection with my brothers over there. And sure enough, I was able to do that. And as a result, I felt like we had an open door. So this is Bible Beyond the Borders. We are in Hebron, a place that many tour groups won't come, but we feel like the Bible goes beyond the borders. And certainly Hebron is a place where that works. And it worked here. In 1994, mm -hmm. in 1994, it was a big massacre inside this building. There is American Jewish, his name Baruch Goldstein. He come in 15th of Ramadan, where people was pray to Mecca, like that direction. Mm -hmm. He was carrying M16 gun, and he entered inside this building, and he killed the 29 Palestinians and 150 injured. Yes. After that, the mosque is divided for two parts. Jewish, they take 60% of the mosque, and Muslim, we take 40% of the mosque. 10 days out of the year, yeah. the Jewish can come to this side. They take both sides of the mosque. We can go to the other side from the mosque as well. Okay, yeah. okay. only 10 days? 10 days in the years. When I travel to Hebron, I always attempt to visit both sides of the tomb of the patriarchs. It is surreal to look at the same tombs from both the synagogue and mosque sides of the building. I often wonder what Abraham would say about the deep divide that exists within the lineage of his sons Ishmael and Isaac. I realize that the depth of the discord between the seed of these blood brothers is deeper than the cave beneath this 2,000-year-old building that houses the bones of their father Abraham. However, it is still my hope and prayer to be a light within this darkness of division. Every day in the morning, they put olive oil with a small candle and they put it inside the cave because nobody allowed to go inside this cave. This cave, it's closed since 1987. <laughs> you want me? Yes. I can do it. <laughs> this is the actual. This, oh, my goodness. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. <laughs> Abraham, Sarah, Rebecca, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, <laughs> all the our prophets that are inside. People know what they allowed to go inside. Yes. My heart is beating. My friend, Aaron! <laughs> Good to have you, my friend. We've got a whole group of people. We're going from our bus to? Joshua's altar. And what is it about this bus? What's different? This is an armored bus. Huh? The Israeli army is actually Wait, requested. you got the, no, no, you got the army for us? Yes. The <laughs> army's going to be with us. We're going to have so, handsome Israeli soldiers with rifles, and they're going to escort us on the way to one of the most exciting biblical places in the land of Israel. Joshua's altar. Well, let's go. 
So we had an opportunity to do something that was gonna be, I called it the creme de la creme. It was the crown moment for us with the Bible Beyond Borders tour, which would take other people to be involved, the military to agree to escort us, our bus driver being willing, and basically the tour participants saying, yeah, we're willing to go into this area to see this one thing. Joshua's altar, which is about a 3,400 year old structure that's based on a command that God gave Moses, that Moses gave Joshua, when you cross the land, go to this specific place and build an altar. 1960s, they find it. This goes on for 30 years. They're, they're, they're searching, searching, searching. Uh, they finally find it, and then something happens. There was uh, some violence that took place at Joshua's altar, because once they found out about it, people would go there. And actually, there was a murder. So it's a lot of tension that was taking place around Joshua's altar. Now in 2019, they found something at Joshua's altar that changes the game for biblical scholarship. They found an ancient tablet <laughs> with ancient Hebrew with biblical curses on that tablet. If it is what we believe it is, it will cause scholarship around the world to shift regarding what we would say is the, the biblical narrative that the language was actually ancient, that the altar was there. And by the way, the altar's at a place where God said, literally, here's where you say the curses, and across the way at Gerizim, here's where you say the blessings. And we stood on the mountain of curse where they found a curse tablet. We walk from here? Okay. Huh? Ah, this way. <laughs> Does anyone have any idea how old this is? We're talking about 3,400 years old. They found it at the very spot where the Bible says it would be. The book of Deuteronomy, uh, the last one of the five books of Moses, uh, is basically Moses talking to the people of Israel before dying, uh, and, and it's his last will. It's, it's, it's his uh, advice to the Israelites. And the main theme that repeats itself constantly in the book of Deuteronomy is, if you follow God, you will be blessed, and if you don't follow God, you will be cursed. The first place that, uh, that we hear about this, connecting this major theme to a geographical formation, like a mountain or two mountains, is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11. See, I'm setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I'm giving you today. The curse, if you disobey the commands of the Lord your God and turn from, way, from the way that I command you today by following other gods which you have not known. When the Lord your God has brought you into the land you are entering to possess, you are to proclaim on Mount Gerizim the blessings and on Mount Ibal the curses. First of all, it's important to understand that, that my heart and soul is in this place that we are right now at Joshua's altar. Um, as someone who is a Bible believer, to, to be able to stand here and touch Moses and Joshua for me is, is, is so excited, mm -hmm. so exciting. Um, and in the last few years, I saw how the site deteriorated and how it's not being taken care of. Right. And uh, sometimes even being vandalized. And we had to do something. And so I, I joined together with a, 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 an archaeologist from Houston by the name of Scott Stripling. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Wait, just a second. Yes. There's a man named Scott Stripling, yes. Dr. Scott Stripling, yes. who has already presented to the world yes. that they found probably the most significant thing, you guys. It's a little tablet, a little curse tablet. You admit, you called him? Yes. So you were a part of that? Yes. Okay, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> and what he suggested was that because we can't excavate at the moment, that we would extract the archaeological dump that was created in the 1980s during right. the excavations of right. Professor Adams Rital right. and reanalyze them. Maybe Adams Rital missed something. And uh, this time we're going to, to use different techniques that would be able to, to analyze the material better. And uh, Scott came with his crew. They started working and wet sifting the materials. And after a few days, Scott calls me and he says, Aaron, 
We found something. Come over here. Okay. I come, and he opens his hand, and he shows me a small lead tablet, about about two inches by two inches. The little lead tablet the that the world's lead. talking about right now. Exactly. And and we were so excited, but we didn't know what we had. Uh, but the great the great thing is that this site was only used once in history by the Israelites, and that's it. And so there was there were good chances that this tablet is actually actually belongs to the Israelite. A time, the Israelite nation, the Israelite civilization. And so uh, we were very excited. We couldn't believe that, that, that this might be maybe one of the biggest archaeological finds that was ever found in the land of Israel. But you know, what's interesting is that the possibility that there are more tablets. Oh, absolutely. That there are more findings here that we could find what? if we continue researching this site. So we just need more people to come. We need more people to come and we need Israel to take responsibility, full responsibility mm. over this site mm -hmm. and make it a national heritage site. This altar here is one of the oldest structures in the land of Israel that belongs to the biblical heritage of not just Jews, but also Christians. I'm inviting you to come to the biblical heartland of Israel. Amen. Come to Shiloh, come, come to Hebron, come to Bethel, <laughs> come to Mount Ebal, yes. come to Mount Gerizim, yes. the places where the Bible really happened. <laughs> I love it what he says there. Come to the places where the Bible actually happened. Yeah. When you were describing things earlier, I was thinking, does it ever go through your mind like, I, I can't even, I can't even grasp this, that yeah. this is where this yeah. happened, like on the Sea of Galilee or wherever. It just sometimes you just kind of like, no, it can't be. Well, I have to tell you, these these young, this little young group of uh, producers slash camera slash uh, folks. In fact, I tell you what, we got to get the young folks to go over there, yeah, to Israel, because I mean, think about that. What they were able to do is to capture. I didn't have to think about it. I, th this wasn't like produced, meaning this is just us doing what we do. And, and what I love about this, and I, it gets my heart beating, is they did they captured they captured the vision of Joshua's altar, but they also uh, did the same thing in Hebron. And mm. so in Hebron, you know, we go back in early Genesis and we find out about Hebron over and over. And we find Hebron for David as the place where he ruled before he went to Jerusalem. You know, Hebron for Joshua, where he gave the land Hebron to Caleb. So there's a lot that I want to talk about regarding that. But, but you know, um, for me, uh, uh, this was a fulfillment. You know, 20 years going back and forth, back and forth to Israel, what would it be like to have a group of people that yeah. we could actually take to? And again, um, I have to thank Aaron. I have to thank Noam, our tour operator, the military, Israel's military. I mean, they did everything they could to make sure. We had, we had little kids. You know, we had kids. We had old, older folks. And they all enjoyed it. And, and they said the same thing. It's mm -hmm. like, we opened the Bible at the very spot where this took place. I mean, isn't that not like, yeah. isn't that like amazing? I mean, here, I mean, America, it's, yeah, okay, maybe it's a couple hundred years old, but when you're standing there at a structure that's 3,400 years yeah. old, that's yeah. something else. Yeah, well, here's what we're gonna do. So they, they went above and beyond the call of duty and they created some other footage for us for uh, what I call eight other places that um, I would like to take people to. Places like uh, Mount Gerizim, the Mount of Blessing, mm -hmm. Shechem, which happens to be a significant place in the Bible called Shechem in English. Uh, ancient Dan, Bethel, uh, uh, ja um, uh, Jericho, Bethlehem, Shiloh and the Temple Mount. So with you, what I'd like to do is take these next few weeks and just go two of those for each one. We take people there, show them what we could show and talk about it. The Bible, the border, and we bring them. And who knows, we might even see some prophetic things that I think that are happening right now that could be a blessing uh, to them. So that's what I'd like to do. Hopefully this was, you know, catches their attention. <laughs> Absolutely, I mean, let's do it. I mean, like, like Aaron said, the more people come, the more they can yeah. turn these places into heritage sites so that, you know, yeah. more discovery exactly. can happen, like exactly. this sort of accidental discovery yes. of the lead tablet with the wet sifting. Yeah. You know, how many other places can that oh, happen goodness, at? at these places that are currently yeah you know, off limits. Yeah, the next episode, we're actually taking us to Mount Gerizim. Oh, he does, he does such a phenomenal job. So I'm looking forward to it. Beautiful. Well, Keith, thank you for joining. Uh, yeah, so thank you. we're thinking what, maybe three, four, maybe even well, five episodes? This, month, or, you know, or this, it, this happens to be a month where there's, there's the feasts that are going on. We actually, uh, there's so much going on with Israel. I mean, I, I think we could fill, uh, you know, pretty much five episodes. Okay, <laughs> all right, great. Well, thank you for being here. I, I love this. This is yeah. great. Thank you for bringing the crew, too. I mean, yeah. that, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I think Michael's going to be thrilled with this, yes. too. So awesome. anyway, thank you. And thank you for joining us. I hope we, you can join us for the whole episode. 
for the whole series, rather. So join us for sure for next episode, uh, and we're gonna be seeing some, be seeing some wonderful things. So I uh, join myself, join Keith, and we will see you next week on Shabbat Night Live. And until then, Shavua Tov. Have a good week. Shalom, Torah fans. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Tap the subscription button and the bell icon, and I promise to update weekly with in-depth biblical research. Be sure to download the new michaelrood.tv app for both mobile and home devices for even more commercial-free content.